Sorry if you can hear my cat. I love her too much to tell her to stop. Hello everyone! So today I am here to do my February wrap-up, which is exciting because I read so many fucking books this month, which... <laughs> let's go. February is a short month, but I read so many books, like, it's... I was honestly kind of planning on trying to do the 28 books in 28 days challenge thing that some people are doing. Um, I failed a little bit, but I read 18 books, which is pretty damn good if you ask me, considering I'm also still in school. So, let's just get on into it. So I'm going to start with the books that I read for class, which is quite a few of them. Okay, so the first book I read this month for class was Waiting for the Barbarians by J.M. Coetzee, Coetzee, something like that. I don't know. This book I actually ended up really, really enjoying. It's just a little novel and it kind of follows this story about a man called the Magistrate who works for this place called the Empire and they're colonizing the people, the barbarians. Basically this book is very like not putting names to anything because it's kind of about like just col post post-colonialism, colonialism just in general. I read, I read this for my post-colonialism class and again, really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like a four out of five stars at the beginning, but I've actually bumped it up to like 4.5, 4.75 stars. I wrote my essay on this for this class and I loved it. I loved like looking at it and analyzing it and I wrote my essay for anyone who's read this book. I wrote, read my, wrote my essay about how the magistrate is just as bad as Colonel Joel and it was such a fun book to analyze and learn about. I just, I actually really, really enjoyed this and really highly recommend it. It's, I guess it's considered a classic, but it was just very accessible and really, really good. And I really enjoyed it. 4.75 out of 5 stars. A book I didn't like that much that I finished next was Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. I, yeah, I don't know. I kind of gave up halfway through if you guys don't notice. I started listening to the audiobook and I don't know. I just didn't like it. I would like, I've enjoyed his um, book Great Expectations in the past. So I was really excited to read more Charles Dickens, but didn't really like it. But yeah, I read this for my Victorian literature class. Not gonna lie, this was a big ass book to like begin the school year with, but Again, just really didn't care about it that much. I ended up spark noting the ending because I just could not be bothered whatsoever. I just, I didn't care. I thought it was bad. I didn't give a shit. So, um, two out of five stars. And then for my American fiction class, we ended up reading some short stories from Kate Chopin, um, which if you guys don't recognize this book, this is, I did The Awakening last semester and did a like 15 page essay on it. So, um, but this collection, we also did, uh, story not by Kate Chopin called The Yellow Wallpaper um, and we did Desiree's Baby and a couple other little short stories from the back of this and I love Kate Chopin. I think she is a great writer and I really enjoy her works so I think I gave like the short stories just in general like four out of five stars but The Awakenings like five out of five stars so highly recommend Kate Chopin. Kate Chopin is great. And then for my American fiction class, we read Bartleby the Scrivener by Herman Melville. I ended up really enjoying this. I apparently had to read this for other classes, but I didn't. My friend in my class called me out. He was like, Kate, we were supposed to read this last year. And I was like, good one. <laughs> but yes, this is about a man who basically the whole kind of premise is that he works on Wall Street and he just refuses to do more than his own job, which doesn't isn't a problem to me at least like he just goes you know his boss asks him to do something that's not in his job description he's like i prefer not to and that's basically what the book is about and i really liked it it's really really short it's literally like 40 pages um but i enjoyed it so like four to five stars the next book that we read was another one from a post-colonialism class and that was a grain of wheat by new Nyug yugi yugi um, this one, not gonna lie, really didn't enjoy it. It was really hard to follow. I was really confused the entire time. Didn't actually finish it. Uh, but I wrote an entire paper and presentation on it. So there you go. That's, that's what being in college is. And the cover just fell off. Great job, Kate. But yeah, this is another one from my post-colonialism post class. I don't know. It... It, I couldn't follow it at all. The writing was really hard to follow and there were so many characters and so many histories and stuff. Um, I actually did my presentation on whether this would have been better as a short story collection. Um, so 
two out of five stars. I'm sure like other people could probably enjoy that, but I have no history whatsoever going into this of Kenya or Kenyan independence. So I had no clue what was going on. And also I like weirdly thought like some characters were actual people. And then like, actually a lot of us thought like certain characters were like actual historical figures. And then we said something about it and our professor was like, they're all fictional. And we're like, what the, what the fuck? And then for my Victorian literature class, I read Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braden, and I actually really, really enjoyed this book. This is what I'm going to be writing my paper about, and I, I just thought the writing style in this was very, very accessible, and I really enjoyed the story, even though it was really, really predictable. And I think I give this a 4 out of 5 stars. The biggest thing with Victorian literature that I have discovered in being in two Vic Lit classes is um, Victorian Lit people, writers, just need to like cut out a hundred pages and yeah, you can be like, they got paid by the word. I don't give a shit. In the new versions, cut out a hundred pages because it's not necessary. I've read some abridged versions of Charles Dickens, actually that's why I read his um, Great Expectations abridged and I enjoyed it immensely more than his full length stuff. Like, I don't think it's that crazy to read abridged stuff when they just got paid by the word. Like. Cut out 100 pages um, because this went so far longer than it needed to. But anyways, um, I am writing my essay about who is the real villain and who is the real victim of this story, if you guys have read it. So this one was really good. Basically, the basic premise is about a man named Robert Audley. His friend George goes missing and he's trying to figure out what happened to his friend George. And we have this mysterious character, Lady Audley. And lastly, for school books, we read for American fiction, Put in Head Wilson by Mark Twain. Everyone knows how much I don't like Mark Twain. Really didn't like this book. Thought it was better than Huckleberry Finn, I'm not gonna lie. So I give it two stars rather than one star. Like, it was also more entertaining than Huck Finn, in my opinion. But, I don't know. I hate his writing style with a burning passion. And I hate his characters. His characters are the most unlikable characters ever. Like, Roxy? Really obnoxious. Tom is the worst character ever. And, yeah. So, two out of five stars. Y'all know how I feel about Mark Twain. No one's surprised. This is basically about a guy who is a lawyer, I guess, in this town. And this murder mystery that happens and like also about this guy named Tom but his name's not really Tom and Roxy and yeah I hate Mark Twain all right so next I'm going to be getting into the books that I read for pleasure which there's a lot more of these which I only have some of them to hold up so oh well the first book I finished was an audiobook that I listened to because I love this man's audiobooks, let me just tell ya. I also have a full video about all of his books and where to start with him because everyone always asks about my opinions on this guy. So anyways, I read Us Against You by Frederick Bachman. Again, his audiobooks are awesome for all of his books. I listened to all of his books on audio and adored them. Um, but this is the sequel to Beartown by him and... I didn't like this as much as Beartown, which I was at first liking it more, but I ended up not liking it as much, but still really, really awesome. I think I gave it a four, four and a half star. Um, basically, Beartown, which is the first book, follows a town where the main hockey star rapes a young girl. And then this book goes into much more about the town after this happens. And yeah, really enjoyed it. Obviously, big trigger warning for rape. The next book I read was The Night Tiger by Yang Zi Chu, which was my book of the month book pick thing. I don't do this very often, but um, yeah, this I decided to pick up because I thought it sounded super interesting, and I've never read a book set in Malaysia, which is where this book is set, so I wanted to broaden my horizons and try something new. This book was just as weird as it was, like, marketed as, which made me so happy because, I don't know, I kept hearing people describe this book, and I thought someone made a mistake somewhere along the lines because it sounded ridiculous, but this book is actually about a man who amputates his finger and this little boy who is trying to find the finger that got amputated and then a girl who is a dancer and she gets the finger somehow and her brother who is a hospital worker and then a guy who's trying to get the finger everyone's trying to get this finger and like murder mystery and it was it was just as crazy and weird as it sounds and i loved it i think i gave it like a 4.2 out of 5 
stars. Really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed her writing style which is crazy because she has another book called The Ghost Bride which I feel like I've heard so many bad things about but it has made me so interested to try it out because I really enjoyed this and really enjoyed how weird it was. Um, so yeah, if you guys want a weird ass story, check this one out. I'm just gonna do all of my physical books and then we'll do books that I didn't read physically. So the next book that I read was The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. This was one of my most anticipated books of 2019. This is the second book to Truly Devious and I weirdly love these books so much and I don't know why. They are YA mystery books about a girl who goes to an elite boarding school for kids who have special talents and I love them. I don't know why. I really really enjoyed them. Um, this this one is obviously the sequel so I can't get too far into it but basically our main character is at this school because of her love of detective work and her obsession with this mystery that happened at the boarding school many years before. And this one I didn't think was as good as the first one obviously, it had sophomore book syndrome and it was definitely just kind of setting up for the third book but I still really enjoyed it and I flew through it in like a day and I give it a 4 out of 5 stars. If you guys like YA mysteries, or even if you don't, highly recommend this series. It is wonderful. And the last physical book that I read was The Passage by Justin Cronin. This is a giant ass book, um, but this is the first book in my boyfriend's favorite book series, so I decided to try it out and I ended up really enjoying it. I gave this a 4 out of 5 stars. The beginning is a 100% 5 out of 5 star and the ending is a 5 out of 5 star but that middle part oof, like maybe a 2.5 or 3 out of 5 stars so I like settle for a 4 because okay so the beginning of this book is wonderful like the first part of this book the first 200 pages some of the most entertaining things I've read in my life like it was so fascinating and then the ending was awesome and made me so pumped for the second book but that middle oh, that middle was not good. <laughs> so this book follows a world where the government is basically trying to make people immortal, basically. And then it goes into the world apocalypse kind of thing because of this experiment. And the beginning part is about a young girl who, like she's literally six years old, who kind of gets like swept up in this government thing that is happening and yeah again that first 200 pages with amy and woolgast and carter and gray and all of that and just like learning about this world and this scientific experiment and this whole place was amazing like again would have been five out of five stars favorite book of all time if it had stayed like that but then it goes into this whole like 100 years in the future kind of thing and I just was not a fan of it. I just was really not a fan of the characters. There are a lot of fucking characters and I just didn't feel anything for any of them if I'm completely honest. Like people kept dying and I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> but then the end I really enjoyed and again it made me really excited to pick up the second book. So I was very torn on this book because that middle was just so fucking boring. Like I'm not even gonna lie. Like if you can't like trudge through a good... 400 pages, not 400, maybe 300 pages of just really boring shit happening. I wouldn't recommend this, but that beginning is so worth it. It was so good. Um, so yeah, I will definitely be picking up the second book very soon. All right, now we are getting into books that I read, not physically. So the first book that I read this month was Severance by Ling Ma and this was a book that I had heard about because everyone was getting it for the book of the month club book and I got it from my library and ended up loving it. My recent just favorite trope is basically apocalypse and we're following a small group of survivors which is what this one was but I really enjoyed the twist it took on the apocalypse narrative. Um, basically this book follows a world where people become zombies but aren't like raw or I'm gonna eat you zombies. They become zombies as in like literally just like doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Kind of making commentary about our world and how 
people just get stuck in these like never ending routines and I really enjoyed that because I feel like Apocalypse is always like, oh my god, it's so scary and all of that kind of stuff. Um, I really enjoyed our main female character in this, our main narrator, really enjoyed her. And I also quite enjoyed the main group of people that we followed. This kind of jumps back and forth between the present and the past and flashing back at the main narrator's um, past before this whole thing happened and how she was actually during the epidemic and everyone becoming zombies she was in New York City taking photos of New York City and posting them online for people who still had internet connection to see what was happening to the city and that was kind of what she was doing to cope with an outbreak that was killing everyone. <laughs> Again, I really enjoyed this, so I gave it a four out of five stars. Another book I got from the library was a booktube fave, and that is Trail of Trail Trail Trial Trail of Lightning by Rebecca Rowanhorse. Um, this is a really popular recent like YA and a urban fantasy um, where the apocalypse has happened. Are we having Are we having a pattern in what Kate's reading right now. There's an apocalypse and then people and gods and monsters from Native American mythology become real and like there's demigods and stuff with powers so yeah we're following a main girl who seems to be like a demigod with powers and has tribal powers and stuff and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really really fun, really really fast and easy to read but like nothing super special in my personal opinion so I think I gave it a 3.25 out of 5 stars. I probably wouldn't continue with the series but this book, first book was very fun. It very much felt like kind of an older Percy Jackson which is 100% because of the mythology and the demigods and the monsters and stuff but Percy Jackson nonetheless. <laughs> I also read the book Stronger, Faster, and More Beautiful from the library, which this, I loved this. I listened to an audio, but I also had the physical edition from my library. Again, loved it. This is a sci-fi um, collection of six short stories. Short stories. Some of them are more novella length. Some of them are actually quite short. And basically, it follows a world where genetic modification becomes normal. And so we start at the very, very beginning of this where, you know, there's a boy who's dying and he just needs a new heart so he gets a fake modified heart. And then, like, you know, a girl who is in a horrible crash and becomes half robot and, like, stuff like that. So, and all the way up until very much in the future. And uh, I really enjoyed this. I think this book would be amazing to anyone who loves Neil Shusterman because Neil Shusterman always likes to take really trend not trendy but like current topics in today's like society and making kind of a whole story out of them and making like a world around them so like Unwind is obviously pro-life pro-choice or Dry is about the current climate change and epidemic with that whole thing um this was very much obviously just kind of a the author's point of view on what could happen if genetic modification became a real thing and I personally am on the stance of the author so I really enjoyed it but you know I'm not gonna tell you what the stance is you have to kind of read it but I again really enjoyed it I my favorite stories were the second one and the fifth one if anyone was wondering but yes this loved it and I gave it a 4.25 out of 5 stars okay so now I read some manga that I'm going to talk about. So the first one I'm going to discuss is one that has been very much asked about on my channel and on Goodreads and that is I Want to Eat Your Pancreas. It was backwards. I Want to Eat Your Pancreas by Gyoru Sumino, which this, I fucking loved this. I picked this up on a complete whim from Barnes & Noble because I had a like a gift card coupon thing and I just picked it up because it sounded so weird and it was weirdly like beautiful and I read it and I cried and it was it was beautiful. I love this so much. I think I, I give it a five out of five stars. This is about a boy who discovers that a girl in his class is dying from pancreas cancer and sh he is the only person from their class who knows about her pancreas cancer and it is basically about them and their friendship and the twist in this book got me like I didn't see it coming at 
all and I also was so excited because one of the biggest things in this book like not biggest things one of the little things in this book that are interesting is that they never called the main character by his name um, because he told the girl the girl's writing a book which is the manga kind of thing um, about her life living with a terminal illness and he asks her if he writes if she writes about him don't say his name so then later on when you find out his name I guessed it and I was so excited so yeah um, I really really love this and I really highly recommend it it was so good and then I also read all three volumes of I Hear the Sunspot by Yuki Fumino so this is a collection of manga that are two standalones and then the beginning of an actual series. So we have I Hear the Sunspot, I Hear the Sunspot Theory of Happiness, and I Hear the Sunspot Limit Volume 1. So the first book is a standalone, second book is a standalone, and third book is a part of a series. I really loved these. This is a series that follows a boy who is hard of hearing and slowly losing his hearing, and a boy who meets him and becomes his note taker in class and they have a romance and it's so fucking cute. So my personal ratings was that the first volume is a 5 out of 5 stars, the second volume is a 4.75 out of 5 stars, and the volume 1 is a 4 out of 5 stars. These are just such cute little romance, like discovering yourself, college, slightly after college, manga and i love them so much if you guys want some gay romance in your life and just cuteness and aesthetic as hell books pick up these because they were absolutely amazing and i really highly recommend them anyways those are all of the books that i read in february 2019 i hope you guys all enjoyed this video and definitely subscribe down below if you want more and i have been doing my currently reading videos so definitely check those out to keep up with what i'm reading as i'm actually reading them if you guys have read any of these books definitely tell me down in the comments below and i love you all and i'll see y'all soon bye